Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Commonwealth teachers could be getting maternity leave soon if a bill makes its way through legislation. And a vocal group was at the Capitol yesterday asking for harder restrictions on tobacco products. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. We are just a couple minutes past 630 on Friday, February 16th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia. Good morning, everyone. I said yesterday, probably not a lot of people are going to like the fact that old man winter showing up again with snow heading into tonight. My buddy, Pastor Bob, nice little instant message. Hey, I'll take the snow. Well, we're looking at a lot of different things going into the old breadbasket per se on how this will evolve tonight. Marginal air temperatures, that's talking about the profile of the atmosphere. The ground is warm. That means we're also, based on the precipitation intensity, yeah, inconsistent snowfall rates. And how hard the rain falls, I think, lends itself to drawing in cold air from above, meaning the change to snow. And yes, it's a cold blast into Saturday and slick roads an issue tonight and into tomorrow. Winter weather advisories posted for a good portion of eastern into southern Kentucky. Leslie Knox Bell County's west-southwest not included. That doesn't mean you're not going to see some snowfall, just very, very light amounts. The clouds have increased here in Hazard and temperature wise, we are at 34 basically in the 30s across most of the eastern half of the state. All right, quick look. Satellite water composite, there are the clouds that have increased the last few hours. There's the system coming in for this afternoon. Again, hazard points north and east, one to two, upwards of three, I-64 corridor, Pike and Letcher counties in the high terrain. More about the snowfall forecast coming up in a few moments. Olivia? All right, Tim, thank you. Yesterday, a man was arrested after an hours long standoff. Thursday evening, Middlesbrough Police Department responded to a dispute call on Cumberland Avenue around 6 p.m. After arrival, officials say they spoke with Cody Gaines and that he was aggressive towards them. Officials say he was on the second floor of his apartment threatening officers with a large dog. Officers reported Gaines threatened to shoot anyone that attempted to enter his apartment. Eventually, officers were able to arrest Gaines. He is charged with four counts of wanton endangerment, terroristic threatening, menacing, resisting arrest, and more. Gaines was taken to the Bell County Detention Center. Teachers would have designated maternity leave in addition to sick leave if a bill passes the General Assembly. Senate Bill 205 was filed this week. Public school employees would get more paid time off following the birth of a child. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on the bill. Kentucky teachers have to use sick, personal, or other days when on maternity leave. Senator Lindsay Tishner says she filed Senate Bill 205 to designate paid maternity leave. And the majority of our teachers are women. A lot of them are coming out of college and starting a family, and they have to rely on those sick days in order to get paid when they're on maternity leave. If the bill is made law, teachers who give birth would qualify for 20 maternity leave days on top of 10 sick leave days they receive each year. And yes, we will support maternity leave uh, uh, for for educators, you know, we need to make sure that we're uh, providing for those who are building their new family. We as new and young educators come into the system. They don't. Unlike traditional sick leave days, these maternity days could not be transferred. They would not be used from year to year, and any unused days upon a teacher returning to work would simply expire. Sister says women could technically have a total of six weeks off by combining their 10 sick leave days with the 20 maternity days in the bill. I think it's it's given broad support. I, I'm, I'm hearing from both sides of the aisle on this. I'm hearing from teachers who are excited about the idea. Um, I, I don't think many are going to be opposed to, to the idea of providing that financial support for our new moms. You know, especially for a profession that's made up of almost 80% women, you know, you would think that would something that would have been addressed a long time ago. 
bill's language states it's for women who give birth and others who need more time off, such as in the case of adoption, would qualify for 30 sick leave days. Frankfurt Phil Pendleton, WYMT Mountain News. The bill was introduced Monday, but has not been assigned to a committee. More than 100 Kentucky teens were in Frankfurt yesterday asking for stronger enforcement of the state's tobacco laws. The Youth Advocacy Summit is asking lawmakers to strengthen the state's law that prohibits the sale of nicotine to anyone younger than 21. Attendees say more young Kentuckians are using nicotine products. Their enforcement agencies must locate businesses who sell nicotine products in Kentucky and put them on the naughty list. The state needs to check that list every year to make sure that they are in no they are no longer selling nicotine products to kids. Kentucky is one of about 10 states that does not have a comprehensive program to enforce tobacco laws. Wednesday's Senate Bill 20 passed on the Senate floor with widespread support 25 to 9. Under the bill, teenagers 15 and older charged with a felony involving a firearm can be tried as adults. Prosecutors would be required to hold a hearing and review evidence to see if the case should be transferred to circuit court. There, the teens will be classified as youthful offenders, but can still face the same penalties as an adult, including prison. Volunteers from Moms Demand Action and Students Demand Action want lawmakers to pass what they say is long overdue gun violence prevention measures. One of those is the Crisis Aversion Rights Retention or CAR Act. Supporters say it would keep guns out of the hands of people in crisis and would create an office for safer communities. The bipartisan CAR Act was filed in the General Assembly just a few weeks ago after not passing last year. Senator Matt Deneen of Elizabethtown sent out a statement. Here is a part of it. Individuals who commit violent felonies need to be held accountable. Senate Bill 20 provides justice for the families, for the victims and their families by holding those responsible for these violent felonies accountable. The bill now heads to the House. And a bill that would help with the health care provider shortage in Kentucky is headed to the Senate. The State House unanimously approved House Bill 407. It would allow EKU to offer medical degrees for practice and licensure in osteopathic medicine. EKU would be the first public college in the state to give out the degree. An Oldham County mother is pushing for a bill in honor of her daughter. Jamie's law would change the way epilepsy is linked to someone's cause of death. Jamie Autumn Smith died in her sleep in 2019, five years after being diagnosed with epilepsy. Her mother says she lost her daughter to sudden unexpected death in epilepsy known as SUDEP. House Bill 166 would require SUDEP deaths to be forwarded to the North American SUDEP Registry in an effort to improve their research. Shaping our Appalachian region is hoping to inspire the next generation to consider a career in the medical field. On Thursday, hundreds of students had the chance to learn from healthcare professionals in Corbin. Executive Director Colby Hall says this is not possible without healthcare organizations working towards the same goal. And so we're really grateful for our employer partners and our, our education partners because uh, without them, this event wouldn't you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't happen without them, and we're really grateful that the schools also sacrifice to get students here because we know that's that's not easy. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it means a lot that these folks are here and set up in a big way. Hall says it is important to help invest in the future of these students and show them what is possible. The nationally recognized program Peer Forward is known for maximizing the power of positive peer influence in low-income communities by connecting them to higher education and careers. And it is on school campuses right here in the mountains, one being Hazard Community and Technical College, where senior program manager Tim Spicer visited yesterday, encouraging students to get involved and become a Peer Forward leader in their institution. I think that programs like this provide a structure for students and schools to be successful. And I think what's most unique about us is that we hone in on the student story and allow them to 
articulate their story in the best way that they see fit. Peer leaders provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentoring for 10 to 15 classmates who are predicted to not finish college. And a good Friday morning to you. A seasonably chilly day across the eastern half of Kentucky into a Friday morning. Basically in the 30s across the region and the pinpoint Doppler radar quiet over the last several hours. Satellite wise, we've seen the increase of cloud cover. And yes, this is the system that is going to be tracking our way as we head through the rest of today and through the region tonight. From Hazard to Jackson to Pikeville northbound, one to two inches of snow, high terrain, Letcher, Pike counties, also along the 64 corridor, we could see upwards of three inches of snow. Lower amounts leaving Hazard over toward London, Middlesbrough, over toward Monticello and Somerset. Here is your 12 hour planner as we rock and roll through your Friday. Oh man, winter, why do you have to show up on the weekend, right? Well, hey, you don't have to drive. Many of you at least don't have to drive early tomorrow morning, hopefully. Uh, mostly cloudy today. Rain arrives mid to late afternoon, highs upper 40s and close to 50. Old man winter, how long of a visit? Back to 60 when? We'll let you know. First alert 70 forecast coming up in a few moments. Olivia. Thanks, Tim, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 643, still to come on Mountain News this morning. Drama in Georgia as an embattled district attorney faces accusations of conflict of interest in the case against former President Donald Trump.